Welcome back. Today we are preserving meat and it seems to be that time of the year. You know, it's a beautiful autumn day. Uh, it's the season where everything has to be canned, packed, jarred and put away in the pantry for winter, which is coming fast. And today is no different. We will be preserving meat uh, in the oldest and easiest way possible, which is with salt. So the two ingredients of today's recipe will be meat and salt. Now I'm going to be honest with you from the beginning uh, so that you don't expect a charcuterie product. This is not going to be a fancy meat that you're going to slice really thin and enjoy uh, a, in, a, in a charcuterie board. No, this is going to be a preserved meat that you will cook with. The only reason for this recipe is that so whenever you, you come into a glut of meat, either a big sale at the shop or you hunt or you preserve your, your hog that you've been raising all your all year round. Um, this way you can store it uh, for long-term use while keeping as much of the flavor as possible. I briefly mentioned the ingredients before, which are meat and salt. Let's talk about salt first. Um, I am a bit um, adamant about salt. Uh, in general when it comes to preserving f meat, food in general, veggies, preserves for winter. And I always encourage you to use rock salt or mine salt, uh, salt from the mine, which I buy in bulk. It's cheap. It does the job every single time. It um, lasts for a long time. And when it comes to preserving, either pickling, preserving meat, this is the best. I would really stay away from pink salt, uh, which is used in the industry for um, preserving meat and making it shelf stable or extending the shelf life because it's full of uh, chemicals that have been demonstrated to be uh, damaging to human health. So stay away from that. All you need is rock salt or mine salt. Uh, if you do not have the possibility to buy mine salt online, which I don't know why, because most countries have mine salts, mine salts, salt mines, uh, and they do make a, an extra buck on the side by selling big bags, like 25 kilo bags or more of uh, mine salt online. So you can buy them on any large online shopping platform. Uh, but if that's not an option, any grocery store, um, should have should have uh, pickling salt or rock salt so you can buy that yeah it's again it's inexpensive it's available and there's no excuse for not finding that specific one apart from staying away from pink uh, preserving salt stay away from table salt as with the pink salt table salt has chemicals and anti-caking agents to keep it like uh, fruity and uh, not clumping together uh, and that's n a big no-no as well when it comes to preserving projects. So stay away from that. Two things, mine salt, rock salt. That's it. I think I spoke enough about salt. Uh, next ingredient is meat. Um, and this process works well with hog or pork meat, uh, with beef, with lamb, with sheep. But I will not touch any poultry because poultry should always be cooked or thermically processed before curing, storing, smoking, whatever long-term preserving process you want to use. I do not trust that the, the, the poultry meat in the industry, in the shops is safe enough so that we can cure it in a safe manner. If you want to experiment on your own, I cannot stop you, but just be warned, you know, don't, don't do this with poultry, don't do this with fish. Uh, there's different methods for that, which are not presented or explained in today's video. As I always do in the description of this video, I will give you exact quantities and, and portions for this whole recipe, while the video is more of a how-to, so it's as streamlined as possible and I don't get lost in numbers and, and portions and quantities here, yeah? So let's begin. Now, the most important step that you need to follow, you need to follow in this whole process is to weigh your meat at the beginning, right now, before you start anything. I am using a big chunk, a five kilo chunk 
of lean pork meat, uh, you need to, to measure each gram of that meat before you cut it, before you process it, before you salt it, before you do anything. I know it's a bit crazy, but trust me, it's very important. And I'll tell you the big secret now. In order to make this meat safe, shelf stable, delicious, ready to use all winter long, we need to make it through this process lose 33 or 35 percent of its initial moisture water liquid uh, and by doing this by drying it uh, through the methods that i'm going to explain to you in a second we make it safe um, when it loses this quantity this specific amount of moisture uh, it makes it undesirable to spoilage bacteria to uh, bugs, pests, anything, because in order for something to spoil, it needs moisture. Life needs humidity, needs moisture to multiply. No moisture or not enough moisture, nobody wants to be there. It's like going uh, to a swimming pool that doesn't have water. What's the fun in that, you know? So, measure the total quantity of your meat at the beginning and write it down. As I said, in my case, it was 5 kilos, whatever it may be in your case. Maybe you're making a smaller batch, maybe you're making a humongous batch, maybe you hunted the elk. So, write it down. Now that you've weighed your meat and you prepared your salt, um, I personally found, through experimentation, that heating up the salt before uh, using it on the meat helps a lot. Helps with the... Um, speed of the process helps with the quality of the process and also helps with um, the shelf life like it has a longer in my experience it, it gives the meat a longer shelf life than if you don't heat up the salt at this point so if you want to follow my uh, advice based on my experience take uh, the entire amount of salt put it in a pot and heat it up over stove, gas stove, electric stove, whatever you have, wood burning stove, like in my case, and let it heat up to boiling temperature, meaning 100 Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius. This will not only heat up the salt per se, but it will also eliminate any moisture that the salt has. And just understand that there is moisture, there is humidity just in the air uh, around us. So no matter how well you store your salt, there will always be moisture inside of your salt. And you will see, uh, if you do it, on the lid of the pot where I'm heating up the salt, there is condensation, there is evaporation. And when I start seeing that, I crack the lid or I, like, I, I move the lid a bit so the water, the moisture inside of the salt can evaporate. When there is no more water, no more moisture in the salt, and it's piping hot, that's when I know the salt is ready for the curing process, for the salting process. Now moving from the salt to the meat, I want to make a point here. When it comes to the finished product, you need to understand one important thing. A lean meat and a fattier cut of meat are going to be two different end products. Uh, the more fat a piece of meat has, the more flavor that piece of meat will develop. It's that simple, you know, fat equals flavor and, and, and aroma and deliciousness. A lean meat has its benefits, a fatty meat has flavor and juice. Let's not forget about juice. So based on your, your preference, uh, you can use either a fatty cut of meat, which is going to yield more flavor for your cooking endeavors or a lean part of meat that I don't know maybe is going to be good for grilling or for I don't know for dishes that require a lean part of meat like a goulash for example now we're going to just get to work so take your pieces of meat or your piece of meat like in my case and portion it in in um, in chunks that you know you will use. If you think you're gonna cook with a big chunk in one go because you have a large family or do you like to make huge batches of food and, and meal prep and then freeze them, then cut it accordingly. If you want smaller pieces of meat because whatever reasons, then do that. I am uh, splitting this five kilo chunk of meat into eight as equal as I can pieces. They are the size that I will be using for my cooking projects. 
and also they help me fit them properly in the pot uh, in which I will be curing them for the first stage. Speaking about pots, you want to have a large enough pot to fit your meat and your salt together at the same time because once the salt is hot, if you went on with that um, advice, and you have your meat portioned, we want to layer it into that pot. Yeah, so grab your pot and then we want to start with a thick layer of salt on the bottom of the pot. Yeah, so salt first, then we put a layer of meat, then we cover that first layer of meat with salt fully covered. We don't want any empty spots, any uh, open up spots, nothing. After that, we continue. Meat, salt, meat, salt, meat, salt. And just as we began, we're going to cap the pot or the last thing that is going to be on the top of the pot is going to be a thick layer of salt or whatever salt you have left uh, at the end of this process. Now, some of you are going to be like, I'm, I'm not going to watch this video anymore because they use so much salt. Um, listen, salt has been historically used to, to, to cure or preserve meat. And um, I found a way to reuse it. So don't panic and say, oh, I'm going to use so much salt and I, it's going to go to waste. No. Throughout this process, throughout this video, I will show you how to uh, recycle and reuse this salt. So it's not all lost. Don't worry about it. Just follow my lead and you will um, you will definitely have solutions for all of your imagined problems. OK, let's let's keep on going because this is this is going to take some time. Come on. Come on. Good. So you finished. You cut the, the pot with a thick layer of salt, put a lid on it. And now we want to leave this big pot with meat and salt in a dry, dark, cold place for 48 hours or two full days. Again, keep a journal, write down the initial weight of the meat, write down what time, what hour, what minute you put uh, or you finished packing the meat into the salt. This is very important. You know, you're dealing with meat here, not with uh, Swiss chard. So we want to be 100% accurate. Now this can be done um, in many places. It can be done in a pantry, it can be done in a root cellar, a cellar, it can be done in a fridge, um, or if it's autumn or winter, like it's in my neck of the woods right now, uh, if you live in an apartment block on a balcony, that'll, that'll work as well, very well. See you in two days. You still here? Go, you got two days, do something with your life. I'll, I'll I'll just I'll I'll wait here. Oh, watch is on the other hand. Sorry. After the two days have passed, uh, we want to take the meat out of the pot and wash it really well. Now you will notice that in just two days, that meat, those pieces of meat, have lost a lot of humidity, have lost a lot of weight, and a lot of their moisture. So the salt is going to be wet. And the pieces of meat will look like they're already cured or dry aged, but they're not. They're just salted. So we want to take them out and we want to wash them really well from all the excess salt that has, you know, stuck on the pieces of meat themselves. And then we want to hang it and uh, air dry it again really well until we can move to the next point or the next stage. While the meat is drying, this is a great point to take a break and discuss the recycling or the reusing of the salt that I mentioned before. So whatever salt you have left, because bear in mind, some of the salt has been absorbed inside of the meats and um, whatever salt you have left into the pot, you can reuse. How? First of all, take some clean, fresh water put it on top of the salt over there, use your hand or a ladle or whatever, a wooden spoon and mix it all together. And then through a sifter, large sifter, or through some cheesecloth, drain all of that water. Now, there might be some um, pinkness from the meat, depending on what type of meat you used. Drain all of that water and whatever salt is left at the end of the draining process, Take that salt, put it in an in a oven safe pot, 
if you want to do it quickly and without any headache and put it in a preheated oven my oven for example has a maximum temperature of 250 celsius uh, i don't know what's that in fahrenheit i'll probably write it down somewhere here so preheat your oven at maximum temperature when it reaches that maximum temperature in a oven safe dish or pot put the salt and cook it for one hour one full hour until all the moisture is out until it's dry and sanitized basically because we want to sanitize it no matter how safe our meat was there's also uh, always a risk okay so in one hour at 250 celsius it will dry sanitize and be ready to be used again now if you don't have an oven or you don't want to go that route you can also do it on top of a stove whatever again wood burning stove gas stove electric stove you have just cook it by the same targets you want it to lose all the moisture you want it to uh, be heated up to a high temperature i.e 100 degrees celsius to sanitize and kill anything that may or may not be inside and to make it ready to be used again uh, i usually keep that salt for meat projects like this either salt or curing or dry aging whatever um, just because you know it's not going to be as perfectly white and pristine as in the beginning so it doesn't matter because if i'm going to do another cured meat or another salt beef instead of salt pork it will get brown it will get pink it will get all of that stuff that it had at the beginning of this recycling process i hope that helps and uh, i'm sure that it's going to gross out some of you out there but at the same time some of you are going to be like hey that's a lot of salt that i'm supposed to just dump somewhere so here's an option so i mentioned that this is not a high-end charcuterie product this is just a, a preserved meat that we will use in cold months in winter or whatever season you want to cook with um, at the same time I ended up or I decided to season a couple of them just because even if I'm going to cook with this meat I still want it to to have more than just the meat flavor itself so uh, what I personally use was rosemary thyme and uh, powdered garlic but you can if you decide you can use whatever herbs uh, you prefer or whatever spices you prefer just stick to dry herbs and spices because any fresh herbs are going to add moisture and that will mold or that will introduce the risk of molding now if you listen to me and you uh, hang your pieces of meat to air dry properly meaning that all the moisture on the outside surface is evaporated trying to season them now uh, is going to be a bit of a headache because you know there's nothing to stick on the surface so it will just fall back into your bowl they're trying to, to season the pieces of meat in so a trick or a tip here is that you can use an alcohol based liquid like wine wine will add the, um, the stickiness effect and um, will also add the flavor of the wine you can add brandy or whiskey whatever you like but the reason why we use it or we want to use an alcohol based medium to attach the spices to the meat is because the moisture and the alcohol will evaporate fast what you're left with is the sugars and all the the sticky the stickiness of those alcohol based liquids that will allow the the spices not only to be attached to the meat initially but also to stick in the future you know after the the water and the moisture has evaporated from those uh, drinks again i i suggest i personally tried that's why i suggest wine brandy or whiskey uh, i don't know if it's going to work with beer or any other more watery <laughs> uh, liquids alcohol based liquids but this is what i've done this is what i can talk about another step that you can practically skip is smoking it um, you don't have to but i love anything smoked you know i love if you watch any of my videos i love smoked veggies i smoke any preserve that i put for winter i like toast made on a on a stove that's burning wood underneath smoke for me i don't know it's something magical so i will smoke the meat before i put it 
uh, into the final step of this process, but you don't have to. Uh, on a more serious note, if you do decide to smoke it, it's not just for the flavor, for the added flavor, but smoking is another of those ancient or old methods of preserving meat. So not only are you seasoning it or are you um, curing it with salt, but you're adding another layer of protection through the smoke that sticks to the meat in the smoking process. This will deter even more any spoilage, bacteria, any fungi, any pest that may want to borrow, 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 beetle, Anyway, get inside of your um, delicious pieces of meat and ruin your future dishes. But anyway, if you do decide to smoke the meat before uh, continuing, uh, know that I smoked them for three hours uh, and that was enough to add the protection layer, to add the flavor and to, to just give it that special aspect that you wouldn't have otherwise. My smoker is connected to my wood burning stove by design uh, and in this way I can smoke meat and cook food at the same time. It's amazing, I know. At the same time, to make sure that you have a good product, a good smoked meat product at the end, you need to be very careful with what wood you use to smoke your meats. For example, in my region, the wood most used for smoking meats is beech, oak, uh, and birch. I do not personally have access to those woods. What I do have access to is apple, cherry, pear and plum because every spring I prune my fruit orchard and I get a decent amount of, uh, of wood that I then store and dry up. So whenever I have a smoking project I have the right amount and the right type of wood to smoke them. Uh, I understand that in other parts of the planet, uh, other parts of the world, people use different woods traditionally to smoke meat and to preserve it. I don't have access to mesquite and all of those, um, you know, different types of wood because I live in a temperate climate, not in a desert. But either way, <laughs> if you want to smoke the meat, you are not going to regret it. Okay, so let's get back on track. Um, regardless of what you decided to do, either smoke it or season it, from that initial point of just hanging the meat to air dry uh, all the moisture from the surface, we want to take it and then store it for two weeks, 14 days, in a cold, dry, uh, dark space. Again, it can be done in a fridge, it can be done in a pantry, it can be done in a root cellar, uh, on a cold balcony if the season is right. Um, this time is necessary for the meat to lose the remaining moisture in order for it to become finished, done and shelf stable. See in two weeks. Oh, again, wrong hand. No, go, go. It's two weeks. Come on. It's like a long holiday. And here we are back in two weeks time. Of course, I have the same haircut, the same clothes. Everything is the same because of the magic of editing. But on a serious note, I want to be honest with you. Um, know that for me personally, it didn't take uh, 14 days to reach the, the, the weight, the designated weight for this process to be done and the meat to be shelf, sh and the meat to be shelf stable and safe. It actually took 11 days, uh, but I still mention 14 days because maybe you didn't smoke it. Smoking it, even cold smoking it like I did, still um, helps it lose some moisture. Uh, everything that you've done or not done until now can influence a bit the, the process. So that's why I rounded it up to two weeks. But regardless of what I say, the scale is going to be the final decision maker yeah you take your initial weight of the meat whatever it was for me it was five kilo five thousand grams and you take the weight of the meat that you have now at the end of this 14 days of curing and drying and aging and preserving and then you want to have lost 33 percent 
33% out of 5,000 grams, 5 kilos, is 1,650. So 1,650 grams or 1 kilo 650. And I want to subtract or minus 1,650 from 5,000. And if the total amount of meat now finished amounts to 3 kilo 350 grams or 3,350, then my meat is finished, is shelf stable, is safe, and it has lost the perfect amount of moisture. And we're done. But the scale is very important. Please, I beg of you, watch the video all the way until the end, and then start your project. And I say this because I get so many messages from previous projects of people asking, uh, about information that is in the video but they never watch it they watch the first three or five minutes and they think they know everything like i understand some of these videos are long but because i'm trying to give you as much knowledge and information as i can i've worked in kitchens for 15 years uh, and i've been bombarded with uh, hundreds of food safety courses in my time in the kitchens so um I'm not trying to do the same, but I'm trying to impart with you as much as I can in a in a more humanely way <laughs> and not so scientifically way, but like more easy to comprehend way, food safety. Temperature is very important. Direct sunlight is a big no-no. You know, all of these things are um, the difference between success and failure or between having a product that's safe and delicious to eat or something that's going to make you sick. So please make sure to write down and follow all of these steps. Otherwise, it's all in vain. You wasted your time. You wasted two weeks, you know, is, and, and money and time and salt and everything. <laughs> okay. If after 14 days um, you still haven't reached the, the desired total weight, then just let it hang more and just keep checking on it. As I said, it took 11 days for me. There's nothing to say that you shouldn't check after day 10. You know, just take them off, put them on a scale, put them back on, and that's it. Because at the same time, you don't want them to be dried too much, unless you want that, unless you want them to become more of a dry aged meat. Again, up to you. I'm just giving you the, the points for up until what I consider it to be the end of this recipe. Okay? Okay. So much has been said, but at this point, the meat is done. It's ready and willing to be used in all of your kitchen projects. As I mentioned before, I love this product, even as salty as it is. So as a test or as a, a, a way to kind of celebrate the end of another meat project or a meat preserving project, I always cut a couple of slices from, uh, from each piece and I try them, you know, with the tiny board, the veggies and other stuff, the small bits and pieces. Um, I just try it and I want to make sure personally and not leave anything to chance. I want to make sure personally that this is a finished product, that it tastes good, that the consistency is right and that, uh, you know, I didn't waste two weeks of my life trying to do something. I hope this video shines some light on the whole process of preserving meat at home and made this whole endeavor uh, a more user-friendly activity and less frightening because let's be honest some of people are afraid or like are uh, lack the confidence to start a meat or raw meat preserving process because of all the media and the articles that are out there trying to tell us how bad everything around us is these days and again Raw meat can be dangerous if not handled, prepared, or sourced properly. And this is why this video was so long and I tried to share with you as much as I could about my knowledge and my experience uh, in the kitchen for 15 years uh, without hopefully overwhelming you. Well, I'm sure I overwhelmed you a bit, but you're strong. You can handle this. Get to the chopper. So I hope... Um, that you have the curiosity to learn something new. I hope that you have the desire to make your own prepared products. Wow, that's a lot of peas. Um, because nothing tastes uh, as good as when you prepare it at home. And it doesn't have to be a meat product. 
that uh, we discussed in this video it can be an omelette it can be anything you know please people start cooking at home again uh, it's a magical process that you can do by yourself you can do with your family with your kids and a home cooked meal even if the ingredients are bought from the store has has more character and flavor than anything that you can buy prepackaged. That I promise. Uh, and if you don't believe me, try it and then uh, leave me a comment and tell me how right I was, because I am right, 100%. There's nothing else that I can add apart from thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it and found it useful, please like and share it with others. Um, and I will see you next time, hopefully with some meat in your pantry.